Okay, so let's talk about finding absolute extrema on a closed interval. So if we take a look at this function here, which is defined from negative 3.8 to 2, we see that the absolute maximum value is 3, and it happens at this critical point. The absolute minimum value is negative 4, and it happens at that endpoint. For this function right here, the absolute maximum is 3.7, and it happens at this endpoint. The absolute minimum is negative 1.6, and it happens at this endpoint. So because absolute extrema are also relative extrema, absolute extrema can occur at critical points. But as these two examples indicate, absolute extrema can also occur at endpoints. So because these are the only places for absolute extrema to occur, all we need to do to find absolute extrema is to find the critical points. So let's start with an example. OK, so this function here, x squared minus 3 times e to the x, we want to restrict that function to the interval from negative 3 to 2 and find the absolute extrema of the function on that interval. So we start by finding the critical points. So to do that, we need to find the derivative of the function. So using the product rule, we have the derivative of the first piece times the second piece plus the first piece times the derivative of the second piece. Then we, uh, we want to clean this up so we can find out where it's either 0 or undefined. So we should factor out an e to the x. And the last thing we want to do is factor this quadratic here. OK, so we get that our derivative is e to the x times x plus 3 times x minus 1. Well, this is defined for all values of x. So the only critical points of this function here are going to come from this derivative being equal to 0. This derivative is equal to 0 if either x equals negative 3 or x equals 1. So these are the two critical points. OK, so now, because absolute extrema of a function on a closed interval can only occur at critical points or endpoints, the only thing we need to do is take a look at this endpoint, this endpoint, this critical point, and this critical point, and see which of these yields the highest function value and which of these yields the lowest function value. OK, so let's start with negative 3. If we plug it into the function, we get negative 3 squared minus 3. So that's 9 minus 3, which is 6, times e to the negative 3. Now plug in 2. We get 2 squared, which is 4, minus 3, which is 1, times e squared. OK, this critical point coincides with that endpoint, so we don't obviously don't need to check it again. And so the last thing to do is to find the function value at this critical point. OK, so f of 1 is equal to 1 squared minus 3, which is negative 2, times e to the 1. So negative 2 e. OK, so the absolute maximum is going to be the largest of these values and that's e squared. The absolute minimum is going to be the lowest of these function values, and that's this negative number, negative 2e. OK, so the absolute max is e squared, and the absolute min is negative 2e. OK, here's a rough sketch of what the uh, function looks like on the interval from negative 2. And here you can see the absolute minimum value. And here you can see, and that happens at x equals 1. And here you can see the absolute maximum value.